Is buying a mobile home a terrible investment or can you make some pretty good money in it? I've heard so many people giving advice to buyers not to buy a mobile home because you lose money and you'll never see that again. Well, I just recently purchased a mobile home as an investment to flip it and then resell it. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I went through and I'm gonna let you know if I either made some good money or I lost it. All right, so when I found this house, I saw it listed on Facebook Marketplace. It was only $65,000. I knew it was gonna be a steal based on what the pictures were. I bought it completely sight unseen. So my parents came over here, we did a FaceTime call. So yeah, I kind of went into this blind. They listed it for 65,000, but there was a ton of interest. So I offered them 70 because I knew it was worth it. I knew what the market was going for and I knew I could make my money. When I bought this, there were a couple of issues with it. I didn't have to worry about the water or permits or any of that kind of thing because it was already set up, but they had a lien against the title of this mobile home. You, I had to wait 90 days, so I still don't have this title. We called, the lawyer called, and she was like, I don't know, what do you want to do, Lindsay? Like they're saying as soon as you pay it off, they'll send it to you in 90 days. So it was kind of a gamble because I'm still kind of waiting here on this title to get in, but I feel like it was a good enough chance to take. And in the end, if it doesn't work out, then I'll just rent it out because I don't need a title to do that anyways. So with this house, I bought it as is with a cash close quick within two weeks. So I kind of was like a little leery on the inspection process because that's kind of a risky move, but that was how I could know that my offer was going to be guaranteed and they weren't going to get into this bidding war and get me way up on price. So I did take a gamble and when we were doing Doing the renovations the guy that I hired found a big leak so we kind of had that to deal with he had to replace the plumbing he had to fix some of the things and I'm gonna show you guys the bathroom and some of the issues that we found there so as you can see there's a lot of like rough stuff all right in here and that's because it was leaking it really had messed up the ceiling right here from where there the water wasn't right so he had to replace all this and fix it and then go under there. We don't wanna leave the new buyers in any kind of mess. So in this kitchen, as you can see, we've already been painting. I think we're gonna try and paint these cabinets to just kind of reuse them. They're in pretty good shape. They're just gross looking. Now I did have to go buy some kilt because I'm gonna show you some of the walls where the oil stains are coming through even after two coats of paint. And we're definitely gonna have to use those because if you look, you can see the dirtiness right there and that's gonna be really hard to cover. So I'm gonna show you some of the walls. So as you can see right here, this this is two coats of paint and it's still coming through and you'll find this a lot with paneling or just really old homes but your kilts going over this should kill that and then it'll we'll be able to put the final coat on there and then you can also see another problem when you're painting paneling is you get these little grooves right here so we bought a really a rough roller that should get in there but that takes a couple of times going over it to make sure it really seeps into the cracks right there's some more oil stains right there of just how even with two coats it's just still not covering so one of the big things that that we had here is this shower. As you can see, I don't know what they did. Something, I don't know, rigged it up. But what we did is a cheap solution because I didn't want to have to rip out this whole entire tub is we've got some um, pieces of board that he's going to put up here to make it look like a finished shower. So I think that's going to be a pretty easy solution to our problem instead of having this eyesore. Another huge mistake we made was trying to paint over this wallpaper. So I tried to paint it because I'm trying to keep this house affordable and not spend too much time, but it's just, it was just peeling really bad and it looked really terrible. So now I've got to go in and scrape all of this off so we can get a smooth surface, mud it so it doesn't look terrible. I hate wallpaper. Ha, huh, here's a big issue. Long story short, I didn't have the power turned on because it was Christmas break when all this was going down and they couldn't come do it quickly. And then I was like, oh, I'll, just, I'll just tough it out and make it. Well, then this is the problem. You lose your daylight so quickly. So now it's pitch black outside and I'm using a lantern to paint because I can't see it. I'm on a time crunch and I gotta have the power turned on tomorrow anyways because when they do showings, they're gonna need the power to make sure everything works. So lesson learned, but I've been painting in the dark with this lantern now for days. <sighs> Problem 99 with this thing. So I just got back from making about 50 11 trips all around place. I paid off the, the guy's mortgage when I purchased it. And they said, okay, we'll send it to you max of 90 days. I'm thinking that's a long time, but okay. They went through it, wouldn't talk to me because even though I paid it off, wouldn't talk to me because I wasn't on it. Talked to the guy's daughter instead and told her, oh, okay, everything's been taken care of. So you just need to go to your courthouse. Go to the courthouse. Oh no, this needs to go to the DMV. So run around back and forth. I had to go and I had to get the title 
clear. So I had to get an insurance bond. I had to file paperwork with the DMV, this whole process. I go back and forth to the title company place. And then I get to the house and have to meet the cops there so they can verify that the actual number that I'm writing on the title bond actually matches up with the mobile home. And then the police is like, well, I need proof that this mobile home was on this property when you bought it. And I show her the paper. She's like, yeah, but nowhere does it say that it was this exact mobile home and you bought this. So that's a tip for you guys. When you're buying it, make sure it specifies that it's a whatever kind of mobile home on your contract because that's not on the Georgia real estate contract. That's what I told her. I said, that's not a, a typical place. So make sure that is there and that way they don't give you any kind of issues. Let's check out the new home. It's finally ready. We've had several complications, but let me show you what we got. In this room, we really just painted. We went in and we painted the walls and then I looked at the ceilings and they were disgusting. They were super tan. We came through, had to paint it because it just was, it was just old and nasty. And here in the kitchen, we painted the cabinets. Again, this is an affordable house. So we're not trying to get all fancy and do granite countertop. That just doesn't make sense. So we use what we had. We used the original cabinets, just painted those. But this paint gives it a really fresh, updated look. In here in the laundry room, there was a lot of issues here. We had to fix the flooring. And then we had to trim out this window because it wasn't trimmed and it wasn't right. And then we painted this to make it. And then we also fixed this window here because it was a mess. And all we did was trim it in and fix a little bit of that to make that look up to date. And here, I actually wasn't planning on painting all of these walls because it was painted. But the person I hired to help went ahead and painted them, so I had to finish it out. So we painted that. So new vanity, new mirror painted. If you'll remember, this was like all messed up and weird. So we, we laid this on top of it, a cheap fix to make it look better. We had to repair the ceiling from where a previous leak had been. So the bathroom really got a good makeover. Same thing, we just had to paint it. And you know, this paneling, as long as you give it a good coat and you really get in those seams, it really doesn't look bad and it looks really updated. So in here, we had that old carpet. We replaced the flooring. Sorry, it's been raining. The floors are kind of messy. Replaced the flooring, got all new this, painted everything. We did have to do the ceilings in here because they were nasty as well. And there were a couple of spots and we just could not get this all the way even. So we just kind of had to patch it and do what we could. Same thing in the bathroom. New floors, updated this vanity because it was a mess and it was a little bitty thing and it needed to go over further and take up some more space. And then we had to strip, because this was all wallpaper, and it was peeling and gross, so we had to strip this all down and paint it to make it do, and then he had to fix the shower, because there again, there was no leaking spot. So, we've had several issues with this. Oh my gosh. The hot water heater had some issues, and it had to be reset. We didn't know what was going on with that. I'm still fixing the HVAC, because it just all of a sudden stopped working, and I cannot figure out why, so I've got to get that fixed. So that's been a big delay. Um, the people that I hired to paint, I don't know what happened. They were just taking time. I wasn't staying on them, so that gave us delay. So we've had so many delays. It has just put this thing out. Because I started in December, it's now March, and we're just now getting this on the market. So we're getting ready to list it. I'm listing it today. So hopefully we'll get some good news and get a good offer. So on this home, I spent right at $8,500 on labor and supplies. So since I bought the home for $70,000, including everything, the closing costs, all that, I have a total of $78,500 in this house. I ended up listing it for $130,000 just based on some of the comparables, but I got an offer for $142,000. This one was not cash. I had several full price cash offers, but I really thought that I might could get the appraisals to come up just a little bit, and I didn't want to leave $12,000 sitting on the table. It ended up appraising for value, so I walked away with that $142,000. So I represented myself in the sale, so all I had to pay were the buyer's commission, so I paid $4,260 in the buyer's agency agent's commissions. That means I made a total of $59,240 on this sale. I would say that's pretty dang good for flipping a home and it being a mobile home. So this right here tells you that mobile homes can still be a really good investment. And if you are strategic about it and do it right, you can make some good money or at least protect your investment if you buy it and live in it for a few years. If you like this video, make sure you check out this one where I give you some more information on mobile homes and what to expect with them. 
As always, I'm your unicorn real estate agent helping you turn your home dreams into your reality.